Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. I was going to say hump day. <laughs> but I mean, it could be a hump day if you want it to be. Most people are off today. So with that, happy uh, therapy day. <laughs> I think we needed to because I think I was showing you some scary stuff on Wednesday and it stays in your brain and you can't get rid of it. All the stuff we talk about is pretty intense. But that being said, thanks for joining me on a Saturday. Bummer, though, I'm missing my kid's soccer game because it's just the way it is. Sometimes you have to pick and choose what are the more important things. So he said, no, stay here and do that. That's more important. So with that, I value all of you. You all know that so much. And um, I really love these sp spending this hour with you all. It's very important to me and also my mental health. <laughs> I'm using you all for my mental health care, <laughs> if that's okay. But I think... Um, um, that being said, I have a bunch of great stuff to talk about today. And um, Saturday is a great day, I think, for us all to join each other and sort of get get into the spirit of bringing back some sanity into the world and um, supporting each other in, um, in trying to have civil uh, conversations because we just can't seem to be having these civil conversations. So I see Seattle's in the house. So why don't we start off with, with who's in the house and then we can move forward to this discussion today. So who else is here and where are you from? And let me know so I can, I can yell you out here and then we can get forward. And I have some really important stuff to talk about, I think. Birmingham, right on. North Carolina's in the house. The Netherlands in the house. Nebraska's in the house. Right on, everybody. Thank you all for so. <laughs> Bucky Bama here. <laughs> right on. Germany's in the house. Right on. Baltimore's in the house. I actually like Baltimore. It's cool there. Uh, Yuba Sutter, California's in the house. Toronto's in the house. We need you all. You all. Iran is in the house. Right on. New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Illinois, Cali, Massachusetts. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Chicago. Chicago, Indiana. Wow, you guys are awesome. Stockholm, Sweden, which um, we're going to talk about that today. So I've been to Stockholm many times. Beautiful, beautiful space. California, Montego is in the house. New Jersey's in the house. Michigan's in the house. Right on. Oh, this is so great. Ontario, California's in the house. Right on, California. Portland's in the house. We need you. We need you to be in the house, Portland. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about your city, but I used to go to Portland a lot. I'm not welcome there <laughs> anymore, which is kind of funny. Louisiana. I lived in Louisiana. I lived in New Orleans for about four years. Virginia, NorCal, right on Upper East Tennessee. Bringing Buck to the Bible Belt. Right on, friend. I appreciate that. You know, this is how we build bridges. I want you all to know that. This is exactly how we build bridges. We come from everywhere to converge with each other, to sort of not feel like we're alone. I mean, you all make me feel like I'm not alone. You all make me feel like what I'm saying is important and what I'm saying does resonate with a lot of you. And so I think that helps. I'm hoping that that, that helps you too. And you don't think it's all the crazy trannies out there, hate everybody. That's just not true. I think what I'm trying, oh, Charlotte, North Carolina's in the house, right on. So you know what I'm saying here? So by having all of you people from all over the, the space, even the world on some level, we get to see that this is an illusion, okay? Those trans activists and those trans people are not, are they are not the majority of the trans sexual community. I will tell you that, okay? Pittsburgh's in the house. I will tell you that. Yeah, I got new glasses. I can actually kind of see. But, you know, I'm sorry about the reflection. I think it's the, I think it's the computer screen coming at me. But so, you know, I, I, I just want Florida's in the house. I just want people to know that this, you know, when you have loud voices, they don't represent a whole space, yet somehow these loud voices are representing me and representing you, even as regular people. When you start being called Texas is in the house, Denver's in the house, when you start getting called cisgender or cis or a certain type of um, um, name. When you ask not to be called that, that is not how you build bridges. And that is, I am not part of that. England's in the house. I'm not, and I won't be a part of that. That's forced language coming from a community, right? And you know, I do these quotes a lot because I don't believe that it's a community. I believe it's a scene. Now, if you, Michigan's in the house, if you actually think about it in a way that it's Alabama's in the house, right on. If you think about it in a way that says, 
that's not community. And if you look at it as a scene, it will actually give you a much broader and, and bigger perspective on what's going on. It's a scene. It's not a trans community in any way, shape or form. This, this is community, by the way. If we needed to show to the world a community, I think we could actually show this as a community. And that's what I really desire along with you, I think, to build an actual community that respects each other, has different, we all have different opinions here. There is no doubt about it. We, we do not agree on everything. And I don't want you to agree. <laughs> I don't want to be a cult leader. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy who's always right, if that makes sense. Every time you sit here with me, I'm giving you my opinion, okay? Some of the stuff is factual, okay, based on facts. But I don't want to change your mind unless you actually feel like you need to change your mind, if that, if that makes sense. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to give you different perspectives. I'm giving you different things to look at. I'm hopefully giving you a, a, a broader understanding of what the heck is happening. And the only way I can do that is by being in that so-called community and being lived in that community for 30 plus years. And it's why I can give you a different a different opinion than what the activists are giving you because those activists are dangerous. Okay. And activism on some level um, can be very dangerous. And it's why I don't call myself an activist. Okay. I'm a, I'm an advocate. If that makes sense, I'm an advocate for safety, for trust, for truth, for better medicalization of all kinds of things, not just trans. I'm not here as just a trans person, if that makes sense. I didn't transition to be a trans person. I transitioned to live male and I transitioned to, on some level, um, be here to show you that transitioning is not what they're telling you from my opinion and my perspective. It doesn't make me right or wrong. And that I think is the problem with what's going on today coming out of activism. If you don't listen to me and you don't understand that trans kids, you're a big, that's not activism. That is not, that is something else. And the activists have, have yeah, Courtney, right. They have an agenda. And so when you have therapists who are activists and you have doctors who are activists and you have people who have an agenda, how are they, how are they in any way, shape or form bringing, um, bringing something to the table that says, I care if I hope that makes sense. I don't believe that anyone who is in a position of caring, of therapy, of medical, of anyone, whether you're going, I don't, I don't, I don't, they can't have an agenda. Because if they have an agenda, then they're steering you in a way that might not resonate with you. If And I think that's why I've been very lucky to have transitioned 30 years ago when my therapist didn't have an agenda. And on some level, do you know that my therapist tried to talk me out of transitioning? Yeah, my therapist tried to talk me out of transitioning because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to talk the person who is struggling with whatever they're struggling with they're supposed to talk them out of tr transitioning medically should always be the last resort. It should never, ever be the first thing you do with a trans person or any medicalized space, right? So let's say you're struggling with anxiety and depression and whatever else, right? Shouldn't the first thing you do is go to talk to somebody about why? Why am I feeling this way? Because there could be a billion things going on with you. You could be stressed out about work. You could be stressed out about the kids. You could be stressed out about life in general. You can't make your house payment. You can't, I mean, they're just, I could throw so many examples. Yet they would immediately diagnose you with anxiety and depression and give you Prozac or whatever other right medicines they're giving. Hence, the title for today, Profiting Off of Pain. Now, why did I pick this title? Let, let me tell you why I picked this title. Last night, I watched this Netflix. I'm a big documentary 
freak. I love documentaries. My my partner is an actual documentary filmmaker. So we're around that a lot. We this is what we really desire to watch documentaries. So I'm an information junkie. I, I like to learn things and see things. And God, if I was like this and when I went to school, <laughs> I would have been a straight A student. <laughs> I would have graduated in honors and been at Yale, <laughs> but I had no desire to learn. It took me to be about 60 before I was like, I want to learn everything. So don't, don't underestimate the fact that some kids struggle in school because they're not interested. It's not because they're dumb. You know that I was called dumb when I was in school because I wasn't, I wasn't good in school and I didn't want to be in school. I didn't, but I struggled. And instead of understanding that, oh, maybe Buck just doesn't, isn't interested in this and that. Maybe we should put him in, which is, I think, what they do today, right? They do that today. But now I was considered a dummy. Did you know that? I mean, God, we'll, we'll talk about that on another live. But I was, I was really bad my, on some level how they treated me when I was young because I was not doing good in school. And I didn't get grades and I didn't graduate. And I was always being held back. And I was always struggling in the academic space. And today I don't struggle in the academic space. And I feel like I can sit and hold my own in a conversation, even with an academic, if that makes sense, because I feel very confident in myself. And I confidence is everything. It's the, it's the winner. Stamp yourself with confidence. You're pretty much going to be a winner in life. And I don't think we're teaching young people confidence. We're teaching them to be cowardly or to, to on some level, be angry and mean and be gimme, gimme, gimme kind of space. So last night I was watching this documentary called um, Bad Surgeon. Has anyone seen? Oh, thanks, Evan. Thanks for coming from from England. I appreciate you. Have any of you seen the documentary called Bad Surgeon? Holy moly. Watch it. It's actually pretty amazing. I wasn't expecting what I got, but I got what I needed. And we're going to talk about that because it, it really hits on something that's been bothering me a lot in the medical space. Hey, Courtney, thanks so much. You're always so lovely to, to come and support me. Why I empathize with detransitioners like I do, because I was permanently disabled by doctors and meds. I'll never, you see that? You see that? That's what I'm talking about. How are we letting doctors do things i didn't really get to see oh you saw it people saw it here did you see it okay oh yeah you made the live you can watch it on netflix it's called bad surgeon please watch it okay please watch it because look what happened to courtney and it happens to a lot of us people bad surgeons okay we are all subjected now, here's what I want to say about, you all know I'm a, I'm a capitalist. I, I am. It's how I created all of this. I believe in capitalism. But what happens with certain things is they get, they get destroyed by greedy people, right? Big pharma ruined everything, okay? Our medical industry here in the United States is a joke, okay? And so I laid the movie Bad Surgeon on top of what is happening with gender-affirming care. That's why I want you to watch this documentary. I want you to watch it because it's going to explain a lot to you. And it's going to explain the medical system. And the medical system is sick. Yes, whatever happened to taking an oath, do no harm. What, whatever happened to that? It's not like that anymore. And I'm what I just said, capitalism. There's good and bad to everything. We know that. You can't, there's nothing that's perfectly good. There's, it just doesn't work that way. Everything has a, a pro and con to it as far as I'm concerned, especially when you come to the medical space because it's ever evolving. They're always trying new things. They're always trying, you know, and when you watch The Bad Surgeon, it's going to put in perspective to you surgeons. Now, that being said, I don't want you to think all surgeons are bad or don't care. I don't believe that. But in the majority of the space, it's a very egocentric Medicine is egocentric, um, surgery, all because you're you're doing something so profound. And if you create something new in the medical space, you're a hero and you're these things. So I put that movie Bad Surgeon over top of transgender healthcare, and it makes total sense to me now. It's all about money, which we all talked about, but it made it more clear to me. So in, I'll just give you the rundown on Bad Surgeon real quick. It's basically about a dude who's a surgeon, who's who's considered at, like he's amazing and God, you know, they always, because he created this plastic tube, 
a trachea. He created a plastic trachea for people who, who have had, you know, surgeries or problems, cancer or whatever, that they had to remove the trachea, which, as you know, it's a very important part of your body. You swallow through it. You know, and then what happens is you get a hole here, right? Right. You get a hole. And so he created this plastic piece that fits in your throat that you can so that you'll have a normal life again and you can close the hole up and blah, blah, blah. Great idea on paper. Right. And he was supposed to be using stem cells in this particular thing so that it, it actually took hold. Here's one of the problems with these kinds of surgeries. Our body rejects a lot of things. Our body rejects stuff that isn't natural or normal. And so it's 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 self-preservation. And so anyway, this dude had everyone in the medical world, but you know, bowing at him. He's amazing. He created this amazing surgery and he did it on three people. Okay. All three people died. All three people died in a matter of a fast amount of time. And it's mind blowing. Then he got the, he was doing all this crazy stuff with ladies and pretending like he was this other, he's a sociopath, but he did not, he did not do what he said he did in the actual study. He studied on humans before he studied on animals. That's the thing right there. In the medical world, you're supposed to be doing your studies on animals, which I have mixed feelings about that. Animals first, and then you move to humans. He did it the other way around. What? What? It's actually insane, you guys. It's insane. And he's an Italian doctor. Oh, thank you, stranger. Thank you. Just had a whole argument with a teen about how PewDiePie's are bad. The new generation think they know it all. It, all the information is. I oh, know they totally do. You can't have the art. You can't have the no, arguments. I have an argument. You can't have the conversation. Facts are facts. They aren't. And I'm going to show you something today that if you want to send this little person, a teen, you want to send them this video. Just um, I'll I'll tell you where to get it. Okay, and and you can give it to them. It's literally a doctor. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to bring it up right now because I think it's really important. Uh, 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 um, sliding off of strangers um, comment here. Watch. I'm going to bring this up because it's very, very important. And they're lying to us. They're lying. The medical world is lying to us. Real quick here. The bad surgeon comes. I don't want to blow the movie for you because it's so great. Bottom line is he was a scam artist. And the medical world was hiding it. And the medical world was supporting him. And all of this time, the medical world knew what he was doing was not right. The medical world let them, let this doctor kill these patients. All because they were worried about their own medical space in the world and how they were perceived. And I just laid it laid it right on top of trance. And I'm like, this is exactly what's happening. And you watch, someone's going to make a documentary all about the scandal of trans healthcare. It's going to come just like the bad surgeon. So please watch the bad surgeon. And then we can talk about it again on, on one of the other lives, but watch this. So, so in response to the strangers um, comment here about the team think they know it all. Of course they do. They totally know it all. Watch this. Associated with significant. Hold on one sec here. Okay. Sensitive window of neurodevelopment associated with Listen. significant cognitive changes in brain function and structure. Animal studies indicate that the suppression of puberty impacts brain structure and the development of social and cognitive functions in mammals. The effects are quite complex, they're sex specific. There's no evidence that cognitive effects are fully reversible. No human studies have systematically explored these treatments on neuropsychological function with an adequate sample size baseline or follow up. There's some evidence of a detrimental impact in the very, very poorly controlled and very, very few studies that are out there. Um, and really very critical questions remain unanswered about the nature, the extent, the permanence of any arrested development of cognitive function that may be associated with these treatments. Wow. If you're going to wow. pharmacologically stop wow. puberty, we need to know what is happening there. You see that right there? That's a doctor telling you they don't have the research. The research they have done as on animals, which is what you're supposed to do in a research of some kind of thing that you're going to do to humans, right? 
So this person, SEGM, S-E-G-M, it's an excellent organization. Follow them because they're going to give you all the real factual information about puberty blockers. Hey, Justin, nice to see you, my friend. Thanks for holding therapy on Saturday now. I need this today. I was so excited. Right on. We all do, my friend. It's out of control. So yeah, you guys, it's so crazy. It's so crazy what's happening. So Stardust, thank you for joining us today. It means a lot to me. I was put on antidepressants for years. That did nothing to help until I was admitted and the psychiatric team in the clinic took me off of them. It was child, that's me. Thank you, friend. I was put on some antidepressants. And my parents were like, ew, what happened to you? Where did you go? It, because it literally makes you go crazy. And instead of just finding the underlying problem, right? They want to go straight to medicine and they want to go straight to you. Oh, just take this. Everything will be fine. That doctor right there. And I want to give you this to you. Um, the person who asked me that question, because you can go and just show it. They don't have long-term studies on the long-term effects of puberty blockers other than what they know about them, which is what they destroy your body. They stop your brain growth. They do so much damage to people that they want to give this to children. And the whole medical world is going down for this one. They're going down. So now the NHS, all of Europe has stopped puberty blockers. All of them. Where is the number one and two? Well, I don't think they're doing it there yet. Number one place in the world where they're giving puberty blockers. Greetings, Monica. Thanks for joining us. Do you all know where's the number one place? Seth is in the house. Where is the number one place in the world that they are giving puberty blockers? Oh, WPATH needs to go down, by the way. WPATH ruined it all. It's all their fault. The number one place in the world is the United States of America. But Portland, America, here in Los Angeles, Children's Hospital, just pumping kids full of puberty blockers. Nope. And we know it's not okay. Yet the LA Ho Children's Hospital is pumping kids full of puberty blockers. Now, I'm gonna, uh, in my opinion, let's see if any of you agree with me. In my opinion, yes, the Netherlands does prescribe it, but in a very, not the way it used to be. And I don't think the Netherlands has ever done it the way everybody else did. The Netherlands does do it. And puberty blockers can be used under a controlled environment with therapy first. I still don't think any children, any child, I don't even care if you have precocious puberty. I don't think any child should be put on them. I don't, I disagree with that at, totally. But that's just me in my opinion. And I don't trust the medical world after watching Bad Surgeon and seeing this whole fiasco with trans kids. I don't trust these people. So let me just put this, this is in my brain now. The countries that are pulling back on puberty blockers, are countries what? That have socialized health care. UK, Tavistock, all of them, they're stopping puberty blockers. And I believe it's because it is a non, not for profit medicalized space. You see that? Now think about it for a second. America, what is medicine in America for? Profit, big pharma connects with medical surgeons. Kids need top surgery. Kids need puberty blockers. Then when they get older, they need bottom surgery. Then guess what? For the rest of their life, they have to shoot hormones. Big pharma. They're never not going to be medicalized. They're going to be medicalized for the rest of their life. Who pays for that? Who pays for that? You do. In UK, in Sweden, in Norway, it's socialized medicine. So it's not a profit-based space. So they backed off of it because they have ethics and morals and possibly could also be because of money. They're not going to make money from it. Here, they're ramping it up like mad. And I kept thinking to myself, but wait a minute. Yeah, I know. You're right, Stardust. They have been trying to change the system. Though in the UK and other places, you can get a private doctor. You can. You can pay for it out of your pocket. That That's a total thing. But the majority of the medical systems in the UK and the EU all over are all socialized medical systems. Yeah. 
So for me, when I think about that and I see it, I see money. This is all about money. How can it not be about money? How can it not be about creating a new medical space to medical? Once you say medicalized, you're talking about money. Once you talk about me medicalized, there's no not turning back. You'll be medicalized forever. That co it costs me money. <laughs> to look and be this way costs me money. And, and whether or not it's my insurance or I'm paying out of pocket, in the beginning, everybody, I had to pay for all of this out of pocket. None of this was covered in an insurance space. I didn't use insurance. It wasn't covered. Today it is. So that says something to me. All of a sudden, now that it's in a medicalized and in an insurance space, it's ramped up. It never was ramped up before. They didn't even want us to do this before. Even though we paid out of our pocket because it wasn't a moneymaker. The minute it became a moneymaker, all of a sudden, think about it. Just sit for one minute with yourself and think about it. I know I might sound like whatever, but it's my, what I, what I preface, preface this with was it's my opinion. Okay. It's not, it's not, well, is it factual? Is it factual? If it's, I think it's based on facts, right? I think my opinion is based on facts, right? If gender equals sex, then why do they need one of, that's right. Because they changed it. They changed it. They actually changed. So here, Courtney, mental health has massive profits for insurance companies, pharma companies. Why do you think they push those SSRIs? Again, right to my point, we have a privatized medical system here. We do not have a socialized medical system here. Most everything comes out of your pocket. You're not sounding crazy, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Solar. <laughs> there are a lot of merit behind it because our healthcare system is based off profits. More. That is exactly my point. 100%. We have to understand. That's why we've got to fight for these kids, everybody. We've got to. Thank you, Stardust. They have also been radically cutting funds so that they can justify switching over to the for-profit American model. Especially, Of course. Of course. Why wouldn't they? So when you watch The Bad Surgeon on Netflix, it's going to blow your mind. This dude is rich, 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 rich. Like he's got so much money. He's, he, he's got girlfriends. He's taking them all over the world. He's flying first class everywhere, first class hotels, first class everything. This guy has such a bank in his pocket. And he's a scamming surgeon who doesn't care about the people. He's a narcissistic crazy person operating on people under the guise that he will fix the trachea with this new plastic tube that he created. If you put any foreign object into a body, do you know what happens? Do you know what your actual human body does when you put anything? Let's say I, let's say, let's say this, let's say this was going to be my penis. Okay, let's say they were going to attach this to me so that I could have a penis and, and, and it was wrapped all around it with skin that they take from my forearm or my back. And then they plug this into my system somehow and they wrap all the tissues around it. And then they just wait. They wait to see what happens. But guess what your body's doing? Your body is going, ew, what is that? Rejects it. It's like, that's not normal. That's not body. That's not human. That is an actual piece of metal that you're shoving into my purse, into my body and wanting the surgeon wants it to, to be, he envisions it to be, but the body's going, no way, dude, that, that is not natural. I'm not. And most of the time with a lot of these surgeries, specifically the bottom surgery, your body rejects it because it's not natural. And that is why we have to talk about our bodies as biological beings and that you can't just create something and expect it to work. Now, most of everything you see on me is all done by hormones, not by, not by surgery. 
Hey, Courtney, SSRI are the worst for your health. Doctors lied to me saying no other meds worked. I had research myself. See that? I'm so sorry, Courtney. I know you got nailed, which like a lot of people do, because we believe. Do we believe doctors as if they're God? Nobody's asking these doctors uh, for a second, third, fourth. This is your child. This is your body. You should have much more respect for yourself than to listen to one doctor who says he knows everything. But when you go to the other doctor, he says, actually, no, Dr. X. No, I don't believe Dr. X. And Dr. Y says, I don't believe Dr. X. And then then you go to, 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 to Dr. A and Dr. A says, Dr. X is full of crap. And Dr. Y, maybe. So now you're getting all these different opinions. Doctors do not agree with each other, by the way. It's also a very narcissistic space. So nobody wants, everyone wants to be the right one, right? Hi, Martina. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, friend. So this is why I'm over it. I'm mad. I'm very mad at our system. I'm very mad that we're being lied to. I, I, it's not fair to not only myself as a transsexual, who I rely on the medical world, people. I rely on a doctor telling me, okay, Buck, we can do this much for you, but you're not going to be that far. Do you know that my doctors did that for me? My doctors never lied to me, ever, ever. They were straight up. This is what's going to happen. You're probably going to have a shorter life. We're not 100% sure about X, Y, and Z. You will never be able to turn back. They, they told me that. They never lied to me so that I could make this really incredible decision to move forward, knowing the pros and cons. Do you think surgeons are going to tell you, well, dude, we might put this in your body here. It might reject it and you might be more sick. I don't think that they're telling people that. I think they're telling, well, in this movie, Bad Surgeon that I watched, he didn't say that. He never told them the cons. He only said, we're going to make your life better. That's all they ever said. He's going to make their life better. I'm not going to, I don't want to blow the movie because you got to watch it, but I'm dying to tell you certain parts of it. I want everyone to watch it and then we'll do a live together to discuss it because it's going to blow your mind how the medical world just totally let this guy do it. And they just totally surrounded him with love and admiration when he was doing the most insane stuff to patients. And I'm pretty sure you, if you didn't, I would appreciate if you could watch my interview with Scott Nugent. Scott Nugent had bottom surgery a long time ago. And it, it almost killed him. It actually almost killed him. And the doctors wouldn't fix it. He, it, the, the movie is called The Bad Surgeon or it's Bad Surgeon. It's on Netflix. Please watch it. It's super important. It's, it's a documentary, three part documentary series, but you're going to be able to take trans affirming care, medical care nonsense. And you're going to be able to lay it over what this dude is doing and how the medical world just basically kept him from being taken out. It's so gross. It's, uh, but anyway, it's going to just on some level show you that we're all right here. And we know there's something weird going on. There is something weird going on. You're welcome, friend. There is something weird going on in this country that we are doing this to little kids and acting like it's totally okay. And I know why. It has nothing to do with these kids. It has nothing to do with wanting kids to grow up happy and healthy. And it's nothing to do with kids know who they are. And it's nothing to do with save the kids. And it's nothing to do with the actual children, which is even more insane and even more disgusting when you really start to see behind the guise of saving children is profit. I got, I want to cry. I actually want to cry. Men cry. It's okay. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. Appreciate that. When you really put it into perspective and you realize, holy crap, Defund Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to bring that one up. <laughs> Where did that go? Okay. 
Steve on Halloween. <laughs> Brilliant. No, you guys. They don't care. They don't care about the children under the guise of gender affirming care. We're going to help your kids. You're a bigot. You're a transphobe. Look at, they got all these useful idiots, useful idiots to actually speak for the corrupt medical space. Yay, trans kids. Trans kids, you're a bigot. You're a transphobe. You know what I mean? Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Everywhere, I just showed you a doctor who said it doesn't work. But every time a doctor steps up and says, slow down, they call that doctor a grifter, a scammer, doesn't know what they're talking about. But when the doctor steps up to the plate and says, oh, yeah, puberty blockers are totally fine. They're reversible. You just pause puberty. That word pause. Does anybody understand what the word pause means? What's the actual definition? If anyone here can just run into dictionary, plug it there, I'll put it up. What is the actual definition of pause? It's basically when you pause your Netflix. You stop where you stop at that space so you can get up and go pee or get a beer or whatever you're gonna do, right? You pause it, right? To stop and right, and able to uh, there you go. To stop and be able to resume. Resume where? Resume where, right? Where you left off. Okay? So in essence, wow, what an excellent idea. <laughs> what an excellent idea. Let's pause. <laughs> Let's pause right now so little Johnny <laughs> doesn't grow an Adam's apple and big shoulders and big hands, right? <laughs> so, right, that's exactly what pause is. And then you pick up. <laughs> where little Johnny left off. But <laughs> guess what? That's not what's happening. That's not what's... So when you pause it, you're literally picking up where you left off. You you start... Oh, you st I paused Netflix. I got my beer. I came back and I put it back on again. And now I'm drinking my beer at the exact same space that I left off. You're not doing that with puberty. It is actually impossible to pause puberty. Because now the drugs are coming in. You're not just pausing it. You're also adding layers on top of that. You're adding medication. And there's there are actual side effects to those medications. It is unbelievable that, that we are actually... that. Yes, Aaron. Aaron. Wait, I think Aaron said something kind of profound there. Hold on one second. You are presenting this with a tone that biases favorable to the negative outcomes for medical and surgical interventions. I have yet to experience non-disclosure for pros and cons. I know it happens, but that's right. They are not telling you the cons of pausing puberty. They, they are not. And if you can show me, show me. But everywhere else that I have looked, it never says it, it does X, Y, and Z. It says it's only pausing. But it's not only pausing because now when you press the go button, little Johnny has been on hormone blockers for 12 months. What do you think happened in those 12 months? Do you think that it just sat still dormant? Do you think that? No, it's not. It cannot just be dormant. It's not a movie. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's not a movie. You don't pick up where you left off. There's 12 months of damage that was just done. You, it's impossible to pause puberty. You stopped. You stopped puberty. There is a, those words mean something. Pause and stop. Stop means I'm done. I'm walking away. I don't have to watch the movie anymore. Pause means I'm coming back to the movie. But once you stop, you're done. They are stopping puberty. How do you pick up where you left off? How? No, that's what I'm telling you. They're lying. You all know it. I, I don't need, I'm preaching to the choir. I know it. I'm preaching to the choir. But, I, but what, I guess really what my point is here is I'm sick and tired of them 
manipulating us because we're supposed to believe them because they're medical professionals. F off. I just watched a movie that showed that you are all unethical in the medical world. I mean, you know, not all, of course not, but you know what I mean. You, there are bad, bad players in this whole game of medical, not just trans, not just trans. We, we, we're talking about trans because trans is on our minds these days. You know, you know what I'm saying? Kitty Ann Lee, thank you. Is that Lou? Lou, these glasses still, I don't know what's going on here. I just got my eyes checked. My eighth grade has a boy using girls. <laughs> Oh my God, my kid is in sixth grade. My eighth grader has a boy using the girls' bathroom. We're told he will be using their locker room to change for PE. Will he consider it hateful if they will? No, you better refuse it. And if you need my help, you reach out to me. I'll write a letter to the school. If you need my help, I'm here. I'm here to help all parents and all kids. Whatever you need. I'm an old ass tranny. I actually mean something to this place and everybody knows it. It's why they're scared of me. I have a different way of, I have actual 31 years of lived experience as a transsexual, as a biological female who lives as a male. I have a lot of experience, a lot. No, trans women don't need male puberty. That includes their brain development or their bone health. Nope, that's right. So that's, that's, that's a great comment. That's right. That's right. So what, what's happening? So now kids don't need their brain? Kids don't need their brain. Yes, I, I think you're right about eugenics. I think you are. It, oh, it's starting to sound all conspiracy. Because <laughs> it's easy to go there. It's so easy to go to conspiracy. But then they want us to be looked at like conspiracy people. Because if people look at us like that, then, they're, then we're not valid. Right? We're not valid because it's a conspiracy. That is, I'm telling you right now, everything I'm telling you is factually based. Hormone blockers do not pause anything. They stop it, okay? They stop it. And then when you restart it, they've lost 12 months of actual human growth. Brain, eyes, ears, nose, throat, shoulders. I could go on and on. Every single part of your body has now been stopped. Do you guys think it's so sick? It is so sick to me that we are having this conversation and that people are going along with it. People are going along with it. I think that's more disturbing for me. Kids don't know anything. Kids don't know how to how to how to sort of be an adult if that makes sense. Kids don't know how to be an adult. Jimmy Dore, I see that in the corner of my eye. You want me to go on the Jimmy Dore show? I think I'm supposed to go on the Jimmy Dore show. Somebody wrote me and said that he was talking about me the other day and that I think he wanted me on his show. I, I would talk, I'll go on any show. You all know that. I, I would go on any show. Well, thanks for sending me a DM. So to the person who wrote me about their school, if you need help on that, you, you contact me. I will be there. I'll write a letter. No, sorry. My kid is in sixth grade. If, if, a, if a boy started to be a girl at the school, you got to take him out of the school and you're going to have to do something else because it's going to disturb the whole school. If little Tommy becomes little Susie during the school system and everyone in the school system knows this, that's not okay for me. I'm not okay with that. That's a private idea that you need to keep, and you all keep saying it in the trans space, it's between the parent and the kids and the doctor, then keep it there. Because the rest of the kids don't need to know about this stuff. And the rest of the kids are going to be affected by it, as you see. So one kid who is trans is now going to disrupt the whole school system and disrupt the female space, the male space, everything else for your kid to be trans. No, 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 no. And I'm not being transphobic, by the way. I'm not being transphobic. Yeah, we're going to talk about next here, right, right now. Okay, so I wanted to actually. Oh, I have something. So that's just my opinion. I don't want. I don't want that at my school. If you come into the school and you're from from Tommy to Susie, and you're already Susie, and nobody knows you're trans, I have no issue with that. I don't, because you're already Susie, right? But no. We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't, we don't put one kid into a, also you're putting that trans kid into a weird space. 
It's also not cool for the trans kid. You're actually making that trans kid feel uncomfortable. So let's get, let's like, let's have a nuanced conversation about this. Why should every kid at the school move over for one trans kid? That trans kid is going to get teased, going to get all kinds of crap. Why would you put your child through that just so they're a trans kid? You're trying to make a point through your child. And your, your poor child is going to be abused at school, going to get hurt, all kinds of stuff. You're never going to stop that. Kids are bullies. That's just how it is. Add a trans kid into the equation. You're asking for your kid to be boiled, to be bullied. There's no way. Be a better parent and think about the whole picture, not just you and your kid. What about the other kids? That's a good parent. Think about the whole structure, what your kid has to deal with at school. Instead of it's me, 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 me and my kids, me and my trans kids. Trans kids are not, uh, no, kids. Save kids. Not save trans kids. Save all kids. That's how I look at it. Kids are struggling. School sucks. They're not doing good in any academics in this country. We're all a bunch like dumbing kids down. I won't be a part of that. My kids study, take piano. You take, he takes piano, Russian. He's soccer right now. Like I'm all kinds of stuff going on in that with that kid. Cause I don't want him to be like, uh, the internet all day on TikTok. Blah. Like what? What? That's gross. I want to, so y'all know about the next Benedict situation. Let's give a little love to ne next. Okay. Cause it's a sad story. Let's give love to the family, to that poor kid who took themselves out for whatever reason. We're going to have the little talk about that right now. I'm so sad that that kid had to go at that age. That is just not, that's the part we all need to be sad about. I don't care that the kid identified. I don't care what the kid is clothing is like. I don't care about any of that. Okay. That kid was struggling and nobody helped that kid. Okay. It's not trans. It's not non-binary. It's, it's a kid who was struggling with some mental health stuff. And no one seemed to help that kid. That's how I look at it. And then comes the trans activists. Oh my God. I saw it coming a mile away. When that kid died the next day, I was like, here we go. You watch, mark my words. The whole trans community is going to martyr. Next is a right there, just on a pedestal that are, doesn't even know. They don't even know how the kid died. They don't know anything. They're making assumptions like they always do. That's literally the trans community continually lying and making assumptions. So there they go. They take next and make next this whole fucking, see, this is why trans rights matter. The, the kid is not trans. They gave that kid that identity. I, I, I only heard from some people that the kid might be non-binary. The kid dressed different. So did I. I got teased. Yeah, they, they, that's what they, they use the murder word. The kid was murdered. Nope, sorry. Nope, nope, sorry. The kid was dealing with crap and couldn't handle it and took a bunch of pills. Where'd the pills come from? Why does the kid have pills? Why is the kid in a space after coming from the hospital, totally depressed, getting into a fight at school, and where's the parent? Would you actually let your kid go into the bedroom and shut the door and you wouldn't check in on them? It, would you do that? I would never do that. If my kid came home, oh my God, I got into a fight and, I, and went to the hospital and was being teased. Oh, I would be all, first off, I'd be all over the school. But secondly, I would be all over my kid on the couch, hugging him, watching Netflix, playing video games, never letting that kid out of my sight. So how did that kid do that? After coming home from such, an, such a very, very, very traumatic thing that happened to that kid. And no doubt about it. The kid had part of it. The kid had part of it. I'm not going to say next is all innocent because that's not true. That's just not true. We know what happened in that bathroom. There, there was a girl fight. <laughs> it was a girl fight. <laughs> that's what happened in the bathroom. And, and she went to the girl's bathroom on her own. No issues. She had totally fine about it. And they got into a girl fight. Any girl and any, look at how many women are in this room right now. And how many women in this room have ever been in an incident in the woman's bathroom? Me. Have you ever been in an incident in the woman's bathroom when you were a kid? 
all kinds of stuff goes on in there. Girls fight. Don't think girls don't fight, you guys. Girls fight. And girls can fight more crazy than dudes. So you know damn well that that's right. It happens. Everyone know anyone who's been in the girls' room when you're a young person, shit goes down in there. Gang shit. Like all kids are very like in their own little tribes. That's what happened. Three girls here, three girls here, talking shit to each other. Full on talking shit. And then next through the water. Next through the water. Not to say that she should have ever been beaten up, but that's game on to me. When I was 13, or how old is she, 16? If you threw water at my face, game on, dude. We got to look at all the facts. Doesn't mean she should die. Doesn't mean she should ever be taking those pills. Doesn't mean we should be sitting here talking about an actual dead 16-year-old. No way should we ever be. Ever. But that's why. I'm so disgusted by the transgender activists jumping on Nex's death, lying about how Nex died because she didn't die from the fight. Nope, she did not die from the fight. We all know the facts. Maybe some of the teasing and the bullying and all of that stuff along the way, maybe. Everything is maybe because we don't know. None of us know. We don't know shit about shit. And everyone's making all the everyone, not just one side, everyone. Oh, uh, like, no, fuck off. This is a 16-year-old little kid who died because they were sad and they didn't want to live life. How does that not hurt your heart? How does that not make you want to say, what the fuck's going on with these young kids? Take trans, non-binary bullshit out of the equation. What is going on? And why would we use a young child's death for trans rights? That's where I'm, I'm drawing the line. I'm not cool with that. That is sick and that is wrong. So I want to show you, you this. Hold on one second here. I, I brought, I, I, um, hold on, share screen. Okay. I, I brought this because I find this to be quite interesting to me. Watch. This is what they're saying. Okay, this is what they're saying on on the Hill, okay? Which is a pretty respected um, um, podcast or, or show, okay? So watch. The Oklahoma Medical Examiner has ruled that 16-year-old Nex Benedict died by suicide. The non-binary Owasso High School student was found dead one day after a fight at school that they were involved in. Benedict's family says they'd been bullied at school now, the medical examiner's report found toxic levels of drugs in their system, and it does say that the death was the result of an overdose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, According to police video released last month in a 911 call on February 8th, Sue Benedict, the teen's grandmother, had expressed concern about a head injury. The teenager was conscious and alert after the fight a day earlier when they told police about the attack by three girls. The kid went to the hospital, you guys. The kid went to the hospital. The hospital released the kid. Okay? There's actual factual information there. That's factual. The Hill would not do something not factual. No, not at all. Right? So how do we know that those girls, they didn't? No, because I'll tell they didn't. How did the girls drug? She would have died way before that that's not what happened she took pill they found all the pills at her house she went home took pills and died that's how it happened that's literally the facts right there so how can you blame those other girls how can we blame anyone except next doesn't mean it's right doesn't mean it's okay but how are we blaming other people how? That's a very bad situation when we don't look deep into what is going on with these kids. What is happening? Why don't we why don't we look outside of the box instead of blaming everyone? Blame, 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 blame. No. Why? I want to know why. I don't want any more of those kids to do that. And if all of us adults are arguing about how she died. We're missing the whole point of all of this. 
all of it, instead of using this tragic incident to figure out what's going on with the young people, we're dividing ourselves more. We're using her horrible situation. Trans rights are human rights. Trans, no, 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 she's not trans. She was struggling. I wished she would have left a letter. I really do. I really do. It's the saddest, most heartbreaking thing ever. We're never going to know. We're all going to make assumptions about this little girl. Next is the new martyr for the TRAs. 100%. They don't want the truth. Why is no one talking about Hazelwood High School assault? That's right. You're right. Exactly, Cecilia. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm not part of that. I want facts. Right? I want to know everything about why this little kid did this. It is, I know I'm, I, you can't see through my glasses, but I got, I got, I got tears in my eyes because I'm a sensitive man. I'm a totally sensitive man. It's gross. I just wanted to show you that. Go watch The Hill and see what they say about it because they, they do a good bantering back and forth on a lot of issues. And I do appreciate them because they're willing to have the talk. I mean, one, one side, I think the woman is a little bit more uh, left leaning and then the dude is a little more right. But they, they, they come together, right? They come together. So that's what I got from that. And um, let me, um, it's getting to be around the time that we have to all go here. So let me, I brought up a couple of things that I wanted to show you because I'm specifically showing you about, again, you know, my, my focus is on trans kids. I can't help it. I just can't stand that they call them trans kids. It's disgusting. So I brought, I have a couple more uh, things to show you before we head out. But first, I'm going to show you this. Are you all familiar with this organization called Fol Folks? F-O-L-X? Do you all know what Folks is? Folks is a place that you can go on the internet and you can buy hormones. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, am I actually saying that? <laughs> Anyone. I don't care who you are. I think you can be 16 or older. I hate them. I'm literally after them. Uh, me and a bunch of us. It's disgusting. It's wrong. It is in no way, shape, or form could this ever be legal. You can go on Folks, it, research it yourself, and you can go in and you can have a 20-minute intake with a nurse practitioner who on Zoom, and you, all you got to say is, I'm trans. And she clicks off a couple things, and then they send you, for $129, they send you testosterone. It's on. But, so here in Oklahoma, uh, S is uh, on, on the rise. Yeah, I think it's everywhere. It's everywhere, friend. So this this is sick. So this is how they market. Now, again, we're going back to medicine for profit, okay? Because that's all what it's about. All trans healthcare is for profit. It's a, it's a for profit making machine. And watch this. It's going to blow your mind. It's totally going to blow your mind. Hear about all the members of your polycule. Okay, hold on, hold on. Watch. I'm a folks therapist. Of course I want to hear about all the members of your polycule. I'm a folks therapist. Of course your emotional support dog, cat, bird, or reptile can come to session. And of course I'm going to want to know their names and pronouns. I'm a folks therapist. Of course I know you probably did that thing that you said that you weren't going to do. And of course I support you anyway. I'm a folks therapist. Of course I'm going to understand your meme references. I'm a folks therapist. Of course I use they, them pronouns. Of course you do. I'm a folks therapist. Of course I'm neurodivergent affirming. Of course you are. I'm a are. folks therapist. Of course you don't have to teach me about your specific identities. Oh and of course I want to know how those identities have impacted your unique experience. Oh my experience. god. I'm a oh folks therapist. Of course I want to hear about your moon water and crystals. I'm a what? folks therapist. Of course you don't have to educate me on trans care. I'm a folks uh, therapist. Of course I'm going to tell you how incredibly proud I am of you. Okay, that's a therapist, you guys. That's a ther that is not the job of a fucking therapist to affirm everything you say. What the? That's what I want you all to see. That's indoctrination. That is pure, one hundred percent, total indoctrination. That therapist, oh, that therapist has an agenda. No therapist should ever say what came out of that therapist's mouth. Those are the people that are prescribing hormones to your kids. Oh, of course, if you're neurodivergent, we love you too. All the buzzwords, all of them, all of them. 
You can bring your little emotional support animal with you. Yeah, don't worry. You like what? Everything that person said had nothing to do with therapy and everything to do with your trans, your trans, your trans, your trans. Here's your hormones, $129, $129, $100, up, oh, trans, trans, trans. That's what's going on there. You should all be sick. And disgusted. We have to take folks. F O L X. We have to go do your own research. We're going to take them out. There's no way. How is that legal? How is it legal that uh, they can send testosterone to 16 year olds? How? With no fat, with no parents signing off. And I don't even care. How is that legal that you can send a 20 year old testosterone with a 20 minute intake? How? How are they getting around the loophole? What's the loophole here? I, re You know, it's a controlled substance, people. Testosterone is a control. Look what it did to me. <laughs> this shit is powerful. How? God, how? How are they getting away with it? Medical for profit. That's how. I bet the pharmaceutical companies are sponsoring them. I bet all the testosterone makers are sponsoring them. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. They're getting backing by Big Pharma. There's no other way they could do it. No other way. It's totally illegal. Totally illegal. Ugh, it, oh, you guys. And then prior to that, who did I talk about? Nex. So Nex was part of this whole thing, you guys. A part of the whole thing. These kids are not trans. They're dealing with some stuff. There's no way that there's this many trans kids. No way in hell. No way. It's like a, it's like a what do you call it? A revolving uh, 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 a conveyor belt. It's literally a conveyor belt for these young people. And they're all going to be messed up. Thank you, friend. Yeah, Buck, the love hole, it's the FDA for sure. For sure. And also no one's, no one's calling them out. Nobody's calling them out. I'm going to do a whole reaction on folks. You watch. I'm going to totally call them out. I have a lot of stuff lined up to call people out. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You know that. I'm done. I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm so disgusted. They're using our kids. Our kids. <laughs> They're using the kids. They're using the kids to experiment. And we're all, we're all in this. All of us. We're all part of this. If we don't all start screaming at the top of our lungs, we're part of this. We cannot let this happen on our watch. We are responsible for those children to grow up, to make their own choices, their own decisions, how they need to live life, what they need to do. Not, not these wing nuts, not the medical. You cannot do that to a child because you're a medical professional. We need to start holding the medical world responsible that this is the one problem I have with capitalism, okay? I'm a total, I'm all about it. I'm all about a free market. I'm all about it. But there are these bad players that always ruin it for the rest of us. It's why I think somehow we need to bring socialized medicine here. I know people don't align with that. But if you think about it in a way that says, will it create more boundaries? Will the government have, again, I don't like the government being involved in my business, but but there are pros and cons to these things. That's why nuance is a very important part of life and everything. You've got the scales. The scales are off balance. They're literally off balance. So if we have a part of our medical system socialized, so some people who can't really afford stuff actually get the medical care they need, we'll have a healthier nation. We won't have people struggling for medicine and going on the internet and the black market and folks healthcare. And instead we'll have doctors who are held to a standard by an actual real system. We don't have a medical system here. We have a for-profit medical system. That's the problem. And I think that's a problem with a lot of what's going on. I have one more to show you all. <laughs> I hope I didn't ruin your Saturday. <laughs> It's so disturbing, you guys. Okay, I'm bringing up the wing nut. Sorry, I know you're going to hate me. Okay, wait, hold on. She's a wing nut. But what she says is going to piss you off. Okay, you all ready? It's going to be the last one. Wait here, let me see something. I don't want me big. 
I want me like this. Okay, ready? Here we go. I want to talk about the sound of silence. Next Benedict was a 16-year-old non-binary indigenous kid who was beaten to death in their high school bathroom. Well, it's easier to blame Republicans or conservatives or whatever, ultimately, they are what? dead because of silence. The silence, well, next endured an entire year of bullying before How do you know? The silence of teachers after they were beaten to not call medical attention. But ultimately, I want to talk about the silence of people who say they support trans people, but who have not been speaking out. Last March, we heard the call for the eradication of transgenderism from public life entirely. It is truly so heartbreaking to watch people that I care about, that say that they care about me, not say anything. Frankly, we don't need allies. We need accomplices. We uh need people making sure that our kids <laughs> live. In 11 months, we have been escalated <laughs> to stage eight. This person, this per that person is so dangerous. Number one, they never leave the house. I'm telling you right now, they never leave the house. They're so crazy. They're getting crazier and crazier. Every TikTok gets more wing nutty, right? How dare you? This is one of the ones that jumped on the next bandwagon. Okay. This was done before the, the suicide came. Oh, God. I said it. YouTube was going to flip out. S. Okay. S to themselves. Off themselves. This came out before we knew exactly what happened. You see what I'm telling you? I used that one as an example. They all jumped on it. Oh, it's all your fault. Save the trans kids. No, first off, next isn't trans. Secondly, the bullying happened for a long time and everybody knew it. Thirdly, guess what next did? Next took their own life. Nobody took it. Next took it. Next took it. So that's why I'm calling this person out. And I'll be doing a reaction on this one because I'm tired of this one. Literally pro-terrorism. Pro this one's pro-terrorism. This one's all about calling everyone names. And everyone's a bagot. And everyone's a bigot. And it's all about me. And I'm neurodivergent, trans, uh, vegan, uh, whatever the fuck else she is. It's and it, uh, My pronouns are Z, Zem, Zo, Clown, Ass, Face, whatever. Like, it's crazy. This one has lost their mind. Totally lost their mind. But a lot of people follow that one. And every time you see them, they get more crazy. They get more, more crazy. It's so, that, that one I use in a, as an example of why we need to slow down. This person has access to hormones. It's making them nuts, okay? It's making them nuts. They're going nuts. They're losing their mind. They're on hormones. They're off hormones. They're pro this. They're against that. That's, you know, very dangerous, if you didn't know, to go on and off hormones like that. It's extremely dangerous for your body. Yet this person is all pushing that crap to all the kids. Oh, you could just take a little bit. No, you can't. No, you can't. That's damaging your body. Every time I, every time I jab myself with that testosterone, I'm damaging my body every single time. It is not normal to put the amount of testosterone I put in my body every week for 30 years, it's not normal, people. I've chosen quality over quantity, if you understand what I mean by that. The quality of my life has been improved, but I understand that the quantity of my life is lowered. I'm very aware of that. But I'm more about the quality of my life. These kids don't even know what they're doing with it. They're playing a game. I just want to have a tiny little mustache and maybe some muscles. And then I might change my mind. You know how insulting that is? It's insulting. Also, not even that. Hormones act differently for everyone. What it did for me might not do for you. Okay? So the fact that they're blanket stating this is what hormones do for you also shows Literal malpractice of the medical system. They're lying to everybody. They're not being honest about what's going on. They're not being honest about, because it's all about profit. All about profit. So you guys have a great day. I hope that we had a great conversation. I did. <laughs> so thank you all for really joining me today. It means a lot to me. I, I do appreciate, you know, I actually love these Saturday ones. No, oh, now that being said, okay, let me just make sure I got all of you. Okay. Did I get this last one? Yep, the whole 
loophole. Thank you all for the super chats. I do appreciate them very much. You know, you're helping me so move forward. I have a great interview coming out with Dana. She's a mom of a kid who was trans. It's a great story. And she's really great, the, the mom, and talking about how she just let her kid work its way out. And now the kid isn't trans anymore. So those are the stories. And then I interviewed um, a young girl yesterday who was identifying as non-binary and trans mask. She's super sweet. I mean, she might be here in the chat. She's super sweet too. And she has a great story of how she got sucked into it. Uh, by her peers and they all told her she was trans because she was kind of masculine and she full on went that way and then one day she watched Blair White and then she watched Buck and then she watched Marcus and somehow it unraveled her out of it. So that is why I appreciate you all so much because some young people are coming to us and some young people are seeing all of us speaking up and it's making a light shine in their brain and they're figuring out that they're not trans. They're figuring out that they're just kids. And that is why we got to continue to do this and we got to continue to fight because these kids will turn around and thank us. I will guarantee you in the long run, the kids are going to turn around and thank us all for being there for them because where are the adults? Where are the adults? Okay, it's our job as adults to be standing up for these kids who don't have anybody standing up for them. So I love you all a lot. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and seeing how important all these conversations are. You have a great rest of your Saturday and, and also tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day and also tomorrow is the LA Marathon. So I'm gonna go watch the marathon and then I'm gonna go play soccer with the kids. So get out of the computer, shut this off when we're done, go outside, breathe the beautiful air, walk your dog, play with your kids. Go to the movies, <laughs> put your phone away, <laughs> and you'll be all better for it. And we'll come back fresh on Wednesday. So thanks again, you guys. Like, please like, share, subscribe. And people who need to see this, please send it to them. And again, I can't do it without you. You all know it. I do do value you so much. And I hope that you feel that from me and from my heart. And I'll, I'll see you guys all on Wednesday for the live.